Okie dokie. All right. So here is, unmute your speaker. Why am I having issues? So today we are starting the new project and the project is the Puzzle Cube project. Now this is of course not our 3D modeling program, but it will give you a good idea of where we are going. Um, this will end up with you actually building a puzzle cube, okay? So the puzzle cube is a, um, when it's finished, it kind of looks like a Rubik's cube, but it's not a Rubik's cube. It's made up of five different pieces. Each piece is designed to fit together. All five pieces are designed to fit together in some sort of, you know, cryptic way that um, makes it a puzzle. And of course, you need to design them so that they all fit together. And like I said, this is something we are actually going to build. So, you know, so there's that. <laughs> And the puzzle cube itself is made up out of these three quarter inch wooden blocks that are about the size of um, dice. And they're gonna be glued together like this. Now, this is my design and it's not very difficult to come up with your own design. And that's sort of the point. And um, I mean, the fact that it's not difficult isn't the point. But uh, the point of the project is for you to come up with your own design. But we are going to go through the steps of making this one relatively quickly to make sure that you have the, uh, the skills for um, making your own. Okay, so uh, don't go there now, but the documents are all available here on the... Uh, the uh, shared calendar. Okay, so first of all, we need to talk about the terminology just so that we are not confused because like you could say this is made up of five pieces, but each piece is made up of other pieces of, you know, the blocks. So we got to give things a name so that we know what we're talking about when we talk to each other. The whole thing is the puzzle cube. Okay. Um, that's the, the final product is the puzzle cube altogether. The puzzle cube is made up of five pieces or parts. Those are going to be the part files, like the orange part, the blue part, the green part, or so on. Okay. And those are actually going to be the names for your part files, uh, orange, green, whatever. And they're each made up of three, four, five, or six blocks. Okay, the wooden blocks or blocks is the smallest component. And they are all going to be glued together in an intentional way to make um, one, make these five different pieces and all the pieces fit together in a cube or puzzle cube. Okay, so some of the rules or we're calling constraints to make this work, 27 total blocks. Total, 27 total wooden blocks, which makes sense because it's three by three by three. It has to be 27. And your this view right here looks a lot closer to what the wooden final glue product is going to look like. Um, your 3D modeling is going to look more like this because you're going to make each of the pieces as their own part file and not a bunch of uh, sub um sub uh, parts so this is more this is closer to what it's going to look like on the diagram 
but I'm using this one to show you what your final product is going to look like. So there's going to be at least, or excuse me, there's going to be exactly 27 blocks. Go ahead and uh, Okay, so 27 wooden blocks, five pieces. Okay, it needs to be exactly five pieces. Okay, and each piece has to have three, four, five, or six wooden blocks. Now, there are only three combinations. There are only three ways that you can add up those numbers to get to um, to get to 27. Okay, if you add up, I'm gonna run out of space here, five different numbers. I don't know how well this is showing up. Let's see. Come on now. Uh, uh, five different numbers to equal 27. Who can think of a combination of five numbers, those numbers being three, four, five, or six, however many times you want, that add up to 27. Anybody have an idea? I'll give you one. Um, four, five, and three sixes. Okay, so you have one block that's made out of four block, uh, excuse me, one piece that's made out of four wooden blocks, another one that's made out of five, and then three of them that are made out of six. And this will be, this sort of combination of numbers will make more sense or be more important when you get to designing your own. Another combination is uh, three fives. Five plus five plus five and two sixes. And the only other combination is a three and the wet the rest sixes. Those are the only combinations of three, four, five, or six pieces that will add up to 27, which it has to add up to 27 because it's a three by three or three block cube, okay? So if you take a look at the example one, this one is a uh, four, the pink one is four blocks, the green one is five blocks, and the gray one, the orange one, and the blue one are each six blocks. Okay, so the way that you are going to design this, the first thing you're going to do, um, and you're not going to do this today because we are going to go through the steps needed to make this one, this example one, first, and then the uh, do one on your own, which the first part will be super fast because I'm just going to show you how to do it. It would be to um, open up the uh blank uh why is this like this let's go like this and um use this exploded view diagram on your computer and there is a good file extension called or not file extension um uh, chrome extension that oh shoot i can't even use it called draw on screen or draw on page and what that lets you do, and I need to zoom out a little bit in order to see it. I uh, wish I had more pixels. I don't even know if you have enough pixels. Uh, but draw on page allows you to draw on the screen. Now, the benefit of that is that you can actually um, you'd use the brush and choose a color and 
color in the plan for your blocks. What's up? Are you serious? Yeah. All right. Well, we may have to use the computers in there and do uh, Active Inspire. What's that? And that has a good draw on page. All right. Well, we'll, we'll solve it. Uh, there are several different ways to draw on the screen. But the point of it is that I can check to make sure that you've followed all the rules without um, actually going and gluing things together that won't work. Now, this diagram is kind of difficult for some people, and it's fine if it is, to explain or to uh, understand what's going on. But the point of it is it's a way to, on paper, show all of the actual blocks so that you can plan all of the blocks in a single page. Now, the way they relate to each other might be a little um, complex. And it's because this is sort of the way that it is lined up, okay? The, um, it's exploded, but this block right here is directly above this block. And one of the rules is that the blocks for a single piece need to be connected by a face. You couldn't have, uh, this one couldn't be part of the green piece because it's connected, it's only touching at a corner. So it wouldn't work. So this one is directly above this one, and this one is directly above this one. And these, of course, connect, and that's how you get the green piece that uh, looks like the green piece here. Um, you're going to need a yellow sheet by the door. Okay, so um, the way that we'll, we'll solve the draw on page thing uh, shortly, but let's, uh, let's just go through it the way, um, well, I guess I can, if we're not using draw on page, but, uh, does the interface for, what is it, Cami? Does that look like this at all? Oh, okay. So it's different. So I'll just use the one that I like better. Okay. So you're going to get some sort of highlighter, you know, so that you can, when you draw it, you can still see the, uh, the block underneath and just start making pieces. So we talked about the examples or the possible combinations, you know, four, five, and three sixes, three fives and two sixes, and one, three, and the rest sixes. Um, those are the only combinations. So if I were to be making that example one, I can just go ahead and start. Let's say I want to do four, five, and three sixes. Um, I'll make one piece like this, and this one can connect, and this one can connect. Okay, that is a fine piece. That is that L piece that um, is the green piece on, on the example. Okay, and the trick is to start at the bottom and sort of build up because there's a couple of problems that are easy to come up with. And actually we'll go through the tips uh, when you get your turn to do your original one. But the idea is the first plan is to start here. And let's say um, the next one I want to make is like this. And the next one I'm going to make, I think I like this sort of upside down stair shape, which all of these will go like this. Those all those pieces fit together. And then the next one, we go these three connect to that one, and these all connect. So each of these blocks need to connect to at least one other block in the same piece by a face so that you can, these are actually going to be wooden blocks that glue together. And then the last one, this can connect to here, and then all of these can connect. Okay, so we haven't done a ton with technical drawings, 
but it is important that you understand how um, this block right here is directly above this block and they can be glued together. They can be part of the same piece. Uh, the other thing that some people struggle with is understanding that this, maybe I should make one with uh, chamfer so it's a little clearer what blocks, what is actually a block, but, um, and I think I will do that at some point. This is one block. This is one wooden block, okay? This is another wooden block even though you can only see the top face of this center piece, those are each one block. This is another block back here. This is another block right here. Okay, so four different blocks are highlighted in orange on the top. Okay, and um, this one in the back here can be glued to this one because they are directly above each other. Okay, the point of this exploded view is just so that you can see all of them. All right, so the step after you make this and get it approved, which is really just me, and every step that I approve is really about uh, keeping you from having to redo things. So it's not like, um, you know, punishment or you're not good enough or whatever. It's this is, let's not waste our time and let's fix it as we go. So you would get your plan approved on the computer. When you get that approved, I'll give you a one of these sheets printed out, and you're going to fill in the blocks the same way that you have on the uh, on your screen uh, with colored pencils, and that's going to be your plan for the rest of the way. Okay, you don't want to lose that. Um, in fact, at most stages, you probably want to take a a picture or a screenshot, depending if it's on the computer or not. Okay, once you have your plan, which the plan for this example is this example exploded view, um, even though this is uh, when I used to do a vertical sheet, but this is what your, um, uh, and this is from 10 years ago, geez. Um, this is what your exploded view is going to look like. Okay, well, with your own design. Again, this is my design. We're gonna go through it. Okay, once you have a completed colored in um, exploded view, which we aren't gonna to get to today because we're gonna go through the other steps of this example. Um, the next step is to do um, isometric drawings. Okay, um, the isometric, do I not have the... Uh, isometric examples, bad shapes. Yeah, okay, you are gonna do a isometric view of each of your pieces. And that's what we are going to work on today. So we have seen isometric drawings before. The green sheet that we started out the year with was isometric drawings. That's the type of paper that you have in front of you, okay? Uh, everyone has a yellow sheet. Y'all can close your laptops. We're not on laptops right now. Even if you are like killing it on the project, I appreciate that. Um, I don't want people that are gonna be off task looking like they're on task. So sorry to those of you who are just flying through this and enjoying it. We gotta do closed laptops for now. Okay, so you are gonna do, all right, so isometric paper. You'll notice if you look at your isometric paper that if you hold it up vertically, none of the lines are vertical, okay? If you hold it up, um, can I, do I even have a rotate? Yeah, if you hold it, what happened? Come on now. I don't know why. This is ridiculous. Okay. But either way, if you hold it, what is going on with my computer? If you hold it vertically, there are no lines going straight up and down. Or if you hold the paper 
uh, portrait, you know, like a normal sheet, none of the lines are going straight up and down. If you hold it landscape, one of the three directions of lines is vertical. That is the way that isometric paper is supposed to be oriented. Okay, so the point of isometric paper is that, and I'm going to get out my straight edge, which is actually very effective. Okay, the point of isometric paper is that vertical lines go straight up and down on the page. Okay, width lines or left and right lines go up to the left and uh, let me just draw the other side of this and depth lines go up and to the right uh, i think it's like 330 And you are not going to be able to do this freehand. If you do it freehand, you're wasting your time because I'm just going to have you redo it. It's not that hard uh, to do it correctly the first time. Okay, so depth lines go up and to the right. Uh, width lines go up and to the left. And uh, height lines go straight up and down. Okay, this is called a projection. This is an example of a projection. There anytime you are trying to draw something that is three-dimensional on a two-dimensional surface like a sheet of paper it is a projection maps are a projection okay if you ever heard of like a mercator projection you we are trying to take a globe a 3d object and put it on a piece of paper this is an isometric projection isometric means one measure and that means that uh the angle between depth and width, uh, depth and height, and height and width are all the same angle. As opposed to maybe you've heard of a perspective um, projection where uh, like everything goes to a vanishing point. So all of the um, width lines, um, you know, point to the same thing. And that's how you sort of draw in art class some sort of. Uh, like cityscape or something like that, or how you make railroads look like they are converging on the horizon. That's a perspective projection. We are doing an isometric projection. And the way that we are going to do ours for the purposes of the puzzle cube is uh, using. Uh, three grids on the isometric paper is going to be one of the wooden blocks. Okay, so one wooden block is going to be three grids by three grids by three grids. And the reason for that is the wooden blocks we're using are actually three quarters of an inch on each side, you know, like the size of a of dice. And it works out nicely for the sake of drawing. Okay. And some other things about isometric uh, drawings, because we have, well, all of our faces on this are going to be pointing one of the orthographic directions, uh, forward, up, or right, just like from the green sheet, although the shapes from the green sheet had more um, directions for faces. But they each are going to get different treatments okay so faces that are facing the front are going to be um, shaded dark faces that are facing the right are going to be shaded light and faces that face up are going to be left blank this gives the um, shadow representation of a light source and i think it looks good this looks pretty sharp as far as i'm concerned so the step would be to, after you get your exploded view approved, go to get a fresh sheet of isometric paper, 
which by the way, I'm collecting this yellow sheet at the end of class. Uh, even though we haven't done anything yet, go ahead and put your name, date and period on it. That'd be awesome. Uh, like at the top, but the top landscape, if you don't mind, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, once you get the exploded view, your filled in exploded view approved, you're gonna do what we're about to do and draw one example of each of your five parts and color them uh, on a sheet of isometric paper. Once you get that approved, then you can go to um, on shape. And yes, again, I know this is not on shape. And the step is going to be make each of the different pieces, each of the five pieces in on shape um, as a tab in the same document. Because once you have all five pieces, you're going to do an assembly with those five pieces. And we've already seen that it's easier to do assemblies when all of the pieces are in the same document. Okay. Um, which I can't remember if I made one yet, which we probably should do the, uh, do this and we'll do this together for yours. Um, but either way, it's going to be just like for the chess set should have been where you had each of your pieces in the same document, all five of your pieces, and then the assembly would be in there also. So what we're going to do is, right now is make these five pieces as they are in isometric drawings. Um, you don't, we're not going to color them in. We're just going to do black and white. And um, that's the thing we're going to do. We're going to do it together, but that's the point for today. Okay. The point of planning, showing you the final product is to let you know that we need to make sure we have space for five separate pieces, which I suppose if you run out of space, you could use the back, but why not just, I think this looks good. Um, and if you recall, well, I guess we didn't do technical drawings of the green sheet. Um, so this is new. All right. So the way that you do a technical drawing, well, first of all, the key is once you have your um, exploded view, which is your exploded view plan, what you can do is make any one of these pieces out of snap cubes. I'll bring the snap cubes up. They're little plastic sort of toy cubes that uh, you know fit together and you can make basic shapes with them. And the way that you would do it is make one of the pieces, which for our sake, we will look at um, like this. So pretend this is like snap cubes. And in your assembly, like let's say, um, in, yeah, in the assembly, or rather in your exploded view, you can see this orange one sort of faces away from us, which if you're holding it the way that it is in the puzzle cube, or my example, it sort of would look like this, which is not a good um, angle of view to draw it. Okay, a lot of the faces are facing away. If you were drawing this from an isometric view, which is what we're doing, um, you could see that this is missing out information or leaving out information. There could be a block like right in this area. So the key is choosing the best angle of view for that particular part. Even if in the um, example, it's facing away, that doesn't matter because there isn't really an up. You could solve the puzzle cube you know, upside down from your plan and that would work too. Uh, but you need to choose the best angle to draw it from, which for this piece would either be something like this because you can see every one of the six blocks here. Um, I think something like this is not too bad. This is not too bad. 
Um, I would say something, I'm going to go with that first one that we had, which was like this. Let's call this the best view. And when you actually have the snap cubes put together, you can play around with it, you know, just spin it in your hand and figure out which view is going to give the most information and then decide that way. And you can always ask for help. But let's go ahead and do the isometric view for this orange piece. And um, so on your paper, and I'm going to be a lot more zoomed in than this uh, because that's the only way it's going to work. Plan on where you're going to start from. If you want the entire orange piece to fit in roughly this area, we need to find where that piece starts. And the starting point, the origin point for the way we draw things, or at least the way I explain things, is always going to be in the bottom right, whatever the farthest towards this corner is, towards the front towards the right, towards the bottom, and we build things up. So where we draw a first line will be from this point. We're gonna draw a line straight up, a line back, and a line to the left, and then just start connecting the edges that we need. But what that means is that if we want, if we want it to fit on the page, we need to start somewhere like here. Okay, or maybe a little lower, somewhere like this, so that we can fit the entire thing in this area. And um, you know what? I'm going to change my mind. I think we should start down here, even though you, it would make sense to make the blocks in this order, you know, the way you read. But to make sure we have enough room, because we're starting in the bottom right of the piece we're drawing. Let's go ahead and start somewhere over here as our origin point. Okay, so let's say this is your origin point a little bit up and in because we don't need to work from the edge of the uh, screen, especially since if we start with uh, if we start with this point, if we start with this point, we're still going free grid to the right because each edge is going to be three isometric grids. So you need to be at least three grids, three vertical lines in from the right. Otherwise, you're going to run out of room. I would say a few more. So maybe something like this is a good starting point. All right. I'm going to zoom in, like I said, so that we have enough room or so that you can see. Um, assuming it lets me zoom. Are you kidding me? Does it really not let me zoom? I wonder if that's going to be hard enough to see. Um, it might be okay. All right. So, um, hold on. Is it going to work better if I go to the... Uh, can I zoom in on this one better? Okay, yeah, so this is going to work better. Uh, I'm just going to do it in the middle here so that you can see what's going on a little better. Okay, so um, let's say this is that origin point that I showed you, you know, in the bottom right of your paper. We are just going to make this, make this orange piece one block at a time. So this first block, if this is our origin, piece, origin part uh, point, we need to go one edge to the right, which is up into the right because that's a depth line, um, or three grids up into the right, three grids up into the left, and three grids straight up. And we can start filling that in. Uh, okay, so from that origin point, which is where I said, let's go vertically. And the key is putting your straight edge um, down, or actually, I suppose, putting your pencil down first, moving the straight edge over to it. And uh, another key is drawing, uh, pulling the line. To get a good line on a piece of paper, 
you always want to be pulling the line towards yourself rather than pushing it. But that's fine. And so this one goes like this. So from our origin point, three grids to the right. And while we're here, we can just go ahead and do this one also. Because this front piece, we can see three faces of it. You can't always see every face. I mean, it wouldn't, it's impossible to see every face um, of it, but we'll go like this, counting three grids for each edge of this block. And then just connecting the remaining ones. And you should probably be able to do it a little faster than me because of the way that you can move your ID around. And uh, those of you who think this is just going to go away, I'm collecting this today. And it's the easiest time to do it. So let's put the uh, devices away. Okay, so there is the first block. That is this first front block. The rest of the way, we can actually draw longer lines and longer lines do tend to be cleaner. So this point right here is where we finished off back here. We can go six grid this way to represent that back edge and three grid this way and then connect this off. Um, in fact, actually let's just do one wooden block at a time. So from where we are here, we're going to go three grid this way, which is that edge, three grid that way, which is that edge, three grid that way, which is that edge, and then just connect them. And that'll be the second block, the second wooden block. And something like this is uh, one, two, three goes like that. One, two, three. And slowly you will see this three-dimensional image appear or projection, I guess. All right, and the next block is this one back here, which the only edge of this that we can see is this edge back here, okay? I mean, we could see these edges, but we already drew it when we drew the block before it. So the only one that we need to do for this, that farthest, that farthest block is another three grids going that way to do that. So that's going, uh, this is a width line. So it's going up and to the left. All right, so this doesn't really look like anything yet because it's sticking out there and we probably could have gone ahead and done the vertical ones first so that it's not as confusing, but it, it'll be fine. So we need to start drawing these and an easy mistake to make. So this point right here is this right here. A, uh, those of you who think this is going to go away, this is what you need to be doing. I'm collecting this today. Let's put the devices away. You're going to need a straight edge. Uh, so from right here, we're going to go forward to the front one wooden block or three grids, and then to the um, left three grids, and then connect up, which we already have this one. That's the first one we drew and then connect across the front. It is very easy 
to like jump ahead and start drawing the other, the top face of this bottom front left piece. But we can't see these edges. Those are hidden edges and we're not drawing hidden edges on this projection. So this is all we get for this bottom front one. And this might be a good opportunity to do, um, to do like multiple edges at the same time. Although maybe we could save that for the next piece. So yeah, let's just do one block at a time so that you at least have the ability to do that and uh, not worry about jumping ahead because that's an easy way to make mistakes at this point. So for that orange one, we need to go one block or three grids to the front from this point, and then three grids to the left, which is up and to the left on the page. And then vertically, from each of these, which we already have that one, and then just connecting, And you may, like this may be super, um, I don't say obvious, but um, intuitive how to jump ahead and do longer lines and do this faster. And we'll get to that later. Okay, so that's this front bottom block. The next one up is directly above that. So let's go to there. And we just need vertical lines extending up from the three points or the three, extending the three lines that we have, this one, this one, and oh, did I mess it up? I think I did four blocks over here. And that's a good reason to hold off on uh, drawing lines to parts that are not completely visible. Yeah, it looks good, I think. Um, but yeah, okay. And so this one, just like the other one, connects, nailed it. You know what? Maybe I can save, ooh, watch this. This will be faster. Excellent, excellent. Oh yeah, this is nice. Uh, yeah, we'll get to shading in a second, but yeah, that looks right. Okay, so we have these and we just need to connect this. And connect this. Okay, and that is this um, middle one here. And then we just need one on top, but we can see three faces of this. So we can, we'll do, this one will actually have a top, but we're just gonna extend these three vertical lines. And then close off the top with a couple width lines and a couple of depth lines or edges, but yeah, they are lines. Okay, so this is the completed orange example piece. And now we just have to do some shading. So when we get to color pencil shading, the way that it's gonna look good is to uh, well, no matter what, we'll keep the faces that face up blank uh, because that looks like a light source. And we will shade the front and the right pieces with the color that it's supposed to be. And then the front pieces will get, you'll go over 
with a um, like a regular pencil to make them like dark versions of that color. And that's how you get the um, the way that I did the example. Yeah. So the way this one is, it's the color on the right side, the color on the front, and then also a pencil on the front. Um, the way that I'm going to demonstrate it here is, well, uh, since you're only working with regular pencil, which is the way you would do something, you know, more professionally, professional drawings aren't using color pencils or at least not to the until the artistic stage. Um, getting a using like your pencil with a little bit of force will be dark. Your pencil with like light force as the uh, sort of intermediate um, gray. And then again, leaving the horizontal flat surfaces blank is the way that you get uh, that look. And this is a reason why you would not uh, use a mechanical pencil for technical drawing because you can't really do what's called line width with a mechanical pencil or uh, line weight. You can't really do line weight with a mechanical pencil. Um, I mean, for today, it's fine if you're using a mechanical pencil, but good old number two is number one. Um, so the faces that face the front get the same treatment, the darkest treatment. The faces that face the right get a lighter treatment. And the faces that are horizontal get no treatment or are left blank. Okay, and that is, that's not enough difference. That is the orange piece. Uh, completed the orange example piece. Okay, let's knock out. Does anybody still need to see this? It'll be on the replay once it's posted. Um, and if you, I am collecting this today. If you finish it, if you're not finished with it, of course, you can hand it in later. Um, but let's go ahead. And you saw that the way that I did this one is not the same orientation of that orange piece that I did for the uh, example here. And that's fine. This orientation, this sort of flat, wide version of the orange piece is still the orange piece. It, I mean, it works fine and it's debatable, which is a better angle of view for that same piece, but that's fine. So. Again, we'll get to design when we choices when you talk about or when you start making your own original design. But there are a lot of tips that I can give you that will make better projects and also help you make help you make fewer mistakes. What's up? Yeah, like dark shading to the front light shading to the right and nothing on the top. And I need better colors, but that's the basic idea. Um, so as far as designing pieces, and I, this is really just if I, um, hopefully I don't forget, but it's easy to make a mistake like, um, do we have, awesome. It's easy to make a mistake like, design this piece, but when you glue it together, you glue it together this way. This piece, even though it looks the same, will not fit in the space that this piece will fit. So that's a, I mean, it's a fine piece. It works fine, but it, um, it's to be careful when you uh, actually build it. Okay, so let's uh, knock out another one. Let's do, um, the pink one is actually pretty easy. So let's do that one. The pink one is just a um, an L with a um, 
with a, a single part, a single block on the bottom. The green piece is a, um, an L with two blocks on the bottom. And we'll do these pretty quick succession. Um, but there is, no, I don't want that. Did I not open this? Yeah, so you can see how this one is a lot like this one, but you know, they're different. Uh, so let's do this one first. Um, on your graph paper, I would say uh, maybe start it bottom center, like right about here, because your first one probably fits in this area. So our origin point is going to be this bottom front center point, bottom right front, bottom right front. And we're going to draw up into the right for depth and up into the left for width. And so remember, this is our origin point. We need to make sure that we have at least three grids uh, to the right on the paper, which is, you know, depth uh, away from the one next to it so that you don't like start drawing and you end up like drawing on top of the one next to it. So give yourself a little bit of space. Um, and it should, should be plenty of room. Okay, I'm gonna do mine in this area because it worked well with the uh, other one, but like I said, um, probably wanna start this one somewhere about here, at least three grids away from the farthest left edge of, well, at least four, so they don't overlap. Um, but like, there's probably gonna be plenty of room to fit your um, pink one. And like I said, just like before, I'm gonna zoom in, and this is gonna be our origin point. And that is going to be right here on the pink one. So I'm going to try and do this with longer lines because it's faster. And so this line is one block. This line is two blocks. So it's going to be six grids. Then we have a vertical that's three grid, a vertical that's three grid, and then a verticals, verticals that are nine grid because it's three blocks. But we are still drawing all of the edges. And it's going to look something like that when we're done. So um, let's do from our point right here. Let's do our first depth line. And our first vertical line is three grid. And this one is three grid. And closing off this right face. Just connecting. Again, pulling the line gives you a, a better, smoother line. And so then our first width line is going to be this way. And it's two blocks. So one, two, three makes one block to there. One, two, three makes an, another block to there. We can connect that way and do the same thing directly above from this point. And then connect a few verticals or a couple verticals. Okay, so right now we have this first right face and then both of these bottom front faces, which if we we're doing absolutely fastest, could probably go ahead and just draw on these, uh, you know, full height 
faces like that, which are, um, like I said, nine grid. But if we're going to draw from here, it's going to be six grid above. And from here is six grid above. So we'll go up six, go up six. What's up? Go for it. One, two, three. One, two, three. From there. One, two, three to there. One, two, three to there. Okay, and then let's close some off. I know I need to close, go from here. And we can only see this grid. We can only see one edge right here. It doesn't go any farther because that would go behind. And from this edge, we can connect back to the front to close off that um, horizontal face. Oh, yeah, that's much faster. Make sure you're using a straight edge, please. It will look better. Okay, and then from there, we just need to go straight up two grids. Excuse me, two blocks, so six grids. And that will give us that. And then we can just close off the top face and define these edges right here. So we have vertical line from this back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then start closing off. We can close off the top. And this one. And this one. And I'm not sure if we're jumping too far ahead on the drawing, you know, drawing multiple edges on the same line, even though it looks better. It's a much more likely that you make a mistake on which edges to draw. And, but I don't know, we might take the next one a little slower. Okay, so there we are. This is our four block. This is an example of a four block piece. And the angle of view that we're looking at is the best angle of view. We can see the most faces this way. If you did something like this, I mean, technically we could see the same number of faces, but actually, no, we can't. Uh, but some of it's hidden. It's really when you get into more complex pieces like um like blue one or something where the orientation really matters but there we go that's a four block piece remember you need some combination and i'll remind you when we get to that of four five and three sixes which is what this one is this has a four block piece the green piece is a five block piece and the rest are six block pieces. Um, but yeah, the other ones is fine too, or are fine too. And you still need to shade. Um, how about, what about this? And go like this. So dark to the front and being consistent with which direction you make dark and which direction you make light is important because on the page, 
it would look weird if some of the um, some of the dark ones, dark faces faced right and the other ones faced uh, front. That would not be ideal. Okay, and I'm actually going to use. Well, I really don't know if there's a big enough difference in the well that's there's no difference in that you can tell the difference between these shades right yeah i think that's better than uh, i don't know maybe i'll just go orange eh, we'll do this one Okay, so there are three faces that face the right that get a light treatment, four faces that face the front that get the dark treatment, and two faces that are horizontal, or flat, and they stay blank. Okay, so that's two done. Um, we might not finish all of them, and I think I might be losing you a little bit, um, which means you would need to hang on to this paper which um, knowing some of your work study habits between you, I'd rather not have you hang on to them just because people tend to lose things and have to redo them. And so, I don't know. If you want me to hold on to your paper, we'll do one more today. But if you want me to hold on to your paper, I, I can. I'd rather do that than uh, have you lose it. Okay, so we've done two and uh, you've probably, um, if you were following directions roughly, uh, have the orange one over here, which looks something like this, if I recall correctly, or whatever it looked like. Then the pink one somewhere like this. Uh, yeah, because it faces the front. Uh, the pink one looks something like this. And if you're spacing them well and being efficient, you could probably fit eight, like four on the bottom and four on the top. Uh, but that's fine. What's that? You can use the bag also. Uh, that's, this is the only activity we're doing on this sheet. Okay, so let's do the green one here because the green one is relatively small, a small footprint, at least compared to the other ones. Okay, so the green one's going to be somewhere over here. So we need to find a origin point for the green one, like somewhere. I think it looks good if it's on the same horizontal grid or the same horizontal points. There's no horizontal line on isometric paper. Uh, but that's not a requirement. And I think it also looks good if you keep the same spaces between parts, but you need to make sure that you are at least four grids away from whatever the leftmost part of your pink piece, because we need at least three grids of three grids of uh, paper for this first depth line. Plus, you don't want it like touching the left side of the pink one. So we are going to go ahead and call this our origin point. And I'm going to do this one face at a time, or excuse me, one block at a time. And this first block, we can see all three faces. So we can go ahead and draw all three the front face, the right face, and the top face of this origin block. So I'm gonna go and zoom in. So we're calling this the origin over here. Well, I'm using my sheet differently. And let's go ahead and do one vertical line. A vertical line is a good one to start with because it has four connecting to it. Uh, so we go one block this way, which is three grids. One block this way, which is three grids. 
or the edge one edge is three grids i shouldn't say one block because it's not it's a one-dimensional line okay and then we can just close it off and that is our first um our first block this front block Okay, next block, we can only see two of the faces. We can see a um, horizontal face and a front face, which means from this top back point, we're gonna go one edge that way, one edge that way, and one edge that way. So we'll go that way, that way, and that way, and then just connect down. So we're going to go depth, excuse me, width from here. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then just close it off. So that is wooden block number two. Okay, this next one, we can only see one face. So we just are gonna extend this edge and this edge and then connect it. And that's it for that face. Excuse me, that's it for that block. So we'll go three more. And then connect this way. Okay, the next one we can see two faces. We can see a right face and a front face. So we need to go up from there, up from there, up from there, which is these three points that we have open and then connect across. So it's gonna look like that. So three vertical lines. And then just close these off. And the only other block is this uh, front one, which we can see three, all three faces. Well, three of the six faces. So we're just gonna do three more vertical lines. One, two, three. And then just close it off. Okay, so that's it for the green piece. Then we just need to, or the edges at least, we just need to shade. Five of the faces. You guys almost done. Five of the faces face the front. Three faces 
face the right. Yeah, that looks good. And three faces face up. And that's it for green. And that's where we're going to stop for today. We'll do the next two next time and uh, keep going with uh, actually building these in on shape and doing an assembly. And once we do that, we'll get you going on your own project. All right. So if you want me to hold on to your paper well if you want to keep going you keep going we'll fly through them next time yeah um oh you can find everything on the calendar spreadsheet in the document called um, let me see what it's called The uh, example isometric shapes is here on the calendar spreadsheet. It's called example isometric shapes. And that is that. Okay, you don't have to do them in this order. In fact, if you're following along, you, we didn't do these them in this order. In fact, we didn't even do the orange one in this orientation. But you can get to the other ones there.